mothers, they teach. Amen. And the reason why mothers teach, uh, you look at the scenario when Jesus was on the cross. He told uh, his brothers to uh, you know, comfort thy mother. Amen. And then he says, don't even cry for me. But he says, you know, weep for your other loved ones, right? And, and the number one thing that I remember about my mom is that when I wasn't saved, she cried and prayed for who? Me. I tell people, <laughs> she said, mm hmm, did she hold that? I asked her, I was like, mm hmm, hold that, wait a minute. But anyway, she, <laughs> she uh, uh, prayed and uh, got me in. Amen. I, I tell people, without my mom, I would be here before you. I'm just being honest. I used to tell God why he even put me with this family. And the reason why that was is because I come from a big family and I was the last one and I got a lot of hand-me-downs and we was uh, dirt poor, amen. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, and I was just asking God that why? And then my other friends, they was getting everything in the neighborhood they only had like two or three kids in their family, so they seemed to get everything. When you got a family of nine, it seems like you wouldn't get too much of anything, amen? So long story short, when I got older, I realized my mama was very rich. She was rich spiritually. And I realized that their parents was very poor spiritually. Because I see how their lives took a turn. And that's why I can say I can uh, present before you that my mama taught me at a young age. Now, when I was my kid's age, yeah, she taught me the Bible, or she took us to buy vacation Bible school, and we enjoyed all the festivities of, as a mother taught and teach. And one thing that you see all mothers do, they do teach. They teach not only by directing, but they also teach uh, how to give and how to receive. And I believe uh, the women are one of the most precious uh, things that God put on the earth. Amen. Even with Eve, the, the mother of all mothers. Amen. And a lot of times people want to give her uh, a bad rap. But, you know, a lot of times we don't realize how cunning Satan is. Amen? Yes, sir. And, and Satan is so cunning to the point where he deceives and manipulates. But God says he still put a ram in a bush and used a woman to bring Christ on the scene. Amen? Yeah. And, and, and the Bible talks about this woman, he found a woman that was favored by God, and we know her name was Mary, to be Mary. And, and Mary was a teenager, guys, at that time. And Mary was uh, about to be engaged. Uh, married to who? Joseph. Amen? And, and we see the point when God had to have Gabriel, the angel, to who come tell her that you were favored by God. Now, I believe every woman is favored by God. The reason why he said, he said that is because he says women has the issue to bring life into the world. Right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Only a woman, a real authentic woman. Amen. Amen. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, we're living in a time and a day where people don't discern what's a woman and what's not a woman. Amen. 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 I'm going to say it loud. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you got too much you got too many, uh, uh, what I like to say, you got too many, uh, uh, no, you got too many uh, people, yeah, imposters, thank you, or phonies, want to be a woman, but they was never designed to be what God has designed to be. And if, if Satan can deceive the opposite sex and think they're a woman, you know that's some witchcraft, right? Yes, right, bro. Thank you, Rosemary. I thought you would sleep back out. But anyway. <laughs> so 
as we're talking about teaching. What is teaching? The Bible says causing to learn and to instruct and to guide. The word teach is to cause to learn, to instruct, and to guide. And that's why I, I'm proud of my wife, Danielle. When I come home, she's, she's on these kids getting the, get the uh, Bible or look at, what's that, uh, Veggie Tales, Super Book. She's all over. I'm like, my God, you better go. And she don't realize that's important because my mama taught us, you know, this stuff. And I'm looking at her just pick up the uh, the mantle or the baton and she's teaching them. Even though sometimes they don't want, we don't, we don't, we don't see super book. We don't did this when they say, she said, no, tell me what you read. She just don't go off of what they say. She's already right, repeat it back to me. See, that's what a mother do. She chooses to learn to instruct to guide. The study of this is to impart what? Knowledge. She wants to impart because one day your kids, my kids, going to be out of the house. Just like my mama realized. We will be out of the house one day. And the reason why we can look at society to this day because some society or some people do not honor their mother. They curse their mother. And, and, if, and thank God we're not in the Old Testament because in the Old Testament, the Bible says, if you curse your mother, they told the elders to take them out of the, the camp and stone them to death. That's how, that's how detrimental God says you cannot dishonor your parents. Right? And, and, and that's why the Bible says, uh, spoil the child, spare the rod, spoil the child. Thank you. I'm sorry for mixing that up, right? But, but we have to discipline. Mothers do discipline. That's love. He says, because he disciplined us. Right? Yes. And I know I, I love my kids, but I know my kids do wrong sometimes. And I do have to work. Discipline them. But they do most of work. The discipline. Because she's around them more than I am. Amen? And 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 sometimes they, they try to play us. You know, kids are playing. They play you between parents. Amen? Because, you know, sometimes they say, you're a softy. And I like to know, I'm not a softy. <laughs> Amen? I'm like, hey, no, son. She said, them girls got you wrapped around your finger. I said, no, no, no. And then I said, Caleb got you wrapped around because Caleb Caleb got special privileges in the house. While the girls go to sleep at a certain time, Caleb had to stay up about 45 minutes, sometimes about 30 minutes. Hey, and I'm like, Caleb got, I'm telling you, because I found out the, 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 the key to confusion in the house. God gives the men the, the girls, right? And then he gives the women the sons. And every person who have a son, I said, did you show more favor? And even, even my sister-in-law, Michelle, asked with her kid. She said, yeah, the sons are like real close, and then the daughters are more close to their daddy, right? And, and, and because, watch this, they instruct to guide, to study, to impart the knowledge of to make aware of information and et cetera. It's just like, watch this, teaching one who teaches. That's what God is saying. He wants you to... Teach one who teaches because they're going to be at an age that they have to teach their children. And one thing that we don't want, guys, is to have our kids raising kids. Amen. So we have to teach one, etc. We have to teach one. I, I remember my oldest daughter. I used to tell her, I said, nah, we ain't doing that. Amen. And I told her some of the things that she won't find herself entrapped with because I was entrapped with. Amen? When I was a teenager. And, and I told her it's going to be times for those things. Amen? Like boyfriends and, and all that other stuff, right? So so I began to teach and instruct. Amen? And the one who teaches, teaches. And the one who teaches, the act is instructing how to do it. And that's one thing Christ came about to do. He taught to instruct how to do it. Because it's easy to tell you not to do it, but
but it's so, I mean, it's easy to tell you not to do it, but it's so uh, great to show you what not to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. So so when the Bible talks about this, guys, he's telling us to that point that we must do what? Instruct. Amen. We must teach and instruct as used in the New Testament. Teach usually means instruction of the faith. It is to be distinguished from preaching or proclamation of the gospel message to a non-Christian. Because when, when we're in here, guess what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be teaching. When we are out there in the public, we're supposed to be what? Preaching. There's a difference. It's teaching in the house of God. That's just why Jesus told Peter, he says, teach my people. What is he telling them? He's telling them, teach them the precepts, how to do it. That's just why we have pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets and prophetess and so forth and so on, that, that we all can come up in the gospel of Christ. Amen? So, so watch this, people of God. Let's get into some scripture. Amen. Let's get to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, if you don't mind, Minister Iris. Matthew 4, verse 23. <clears throat> and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And, and some of us would be like, Jesus went about all. He went about all preaching. I mean, teaching in their churches, preaching the good news, the gospel of the king. So he started out teaching, then he went preaching because he went outside the synagogue, the church, and he began to preach. Remember I said the difference. The difference is when you're in the house, when your, when your mom was teaching you and I, they taught us in the house, but when we went outside, they preached to other kids, say, hey, my child don't do that. My son or my daughter ain't going to be involved in that. Amen. Now it's preaching. See, the difference is we teach some of uh, my my friends, they said, hey, don't hang around. His parents said, don't hang around that, cat, that child because they bad. Their parents ain't teaching them or disciplining them. And the reason why they were saying this is because we know that the old timers used to say, birds of the feather do what? Flock and we surely ain't fit to be flocking with people who don't want to be taught. Right. Amen? Amen? Because the book of Proverbs began to talk about a person who don't like to be taught is a fool. And I told, I told you guys when I was a youngin, I grew up on Mr. T. And Mr. T says, I pity the fool. Amen. That was one of my favorite lines, Mr. T. I pity the fool. Amen. And, and I got it when I got a little old. Amen. Because fools keep on doing the same old foolish things. And then your mama used to tell you, don't be the fool. Amen. Remember that? My mama told me, you don't get played and be a fool. Now, they can do that, but you can't do it. And then she used to tell me things like this, and your parents did too. If, if, if Terry jump off the bridge, you going to jump with him? <laughs> My mama used to tell me, are you the leader or are you the follower? Amen. So he was teaching me, hey, you got to wise up, young man, to be what God has called you to be. You can't let fools lead you. Yeah. Amen. Amen and when I was young, I was allowing the fool to lead me. And then I got wise. Because I knew what was going to happen if I keep on doing with the fool and stuff. I'm going to get caught up. Amen? Amen. So I love how the Bible says Jesus went about, he went about uh, in Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the good news of the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease. When you think about healing, mothers heal. When you're sick, guess what mothers do? They comfort you to heal you. They want you to get better. Amen? Amen. They, they, they know how to give you the right solution. Even words of what comfort. And we feel like as a child, we about to die. And mother's telling you, it's going to be your out, baby. Amen. Amen. And, and we and we look it in her eyes and she really believes it's going to be out because she give us she give us either medication or she just rubs our back or, or just comforts us a way that we said, it is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. And that's why we love our mamas. Amen. That's why we appreciate mothers because mothers are that type of person that deserve the honor. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, man. This, this is going to be a good one. Y'all keep it up with me. Watch this, people. 
He says, healing every disease and every weakness and what infirmities among what? The people. That's what Jesus did, right? So when we see this, guys, this is distinguished and seen in the description of the weak, of what Christ preached and taught the people. And since this sound instructions of faith is essential to spiritual growth of Christians and development of the church, because first of all, the Lord is doing the same thing mothers are doing. Yes. That's just why he says, he says, uh, you're like little chickens. You know, that came up to me. He said, you're like little, he said, but some of you won't let me comfort you, gather you, you run it. Jesus. And some people do run away from their mothers. They do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I, I got rebellious at a time. I don't know about you. I got so rebellious, I didn't want to hear no more what she was talking about. But I had to learn the hard way. Mama was right. Amen. Because I used to be like a lot of people. Man, this guy, you can't see him. They praying that this is stupid. I, you know, you get old, you think you're wise. And I said, you can't see him. You can't hear him. Is it like Santa Claus? You remember when you was a kid? They used to tell you it was Santa Claus. I'm sorry, if you told your child it's a Santa Claus, you, you need to tell them the truth. Oh, Amen. Amen. Because if they, because they, because <laughs> I know I, this is a disclaimer. Because a lot of times people still be lying to their kids. Amen. And I tell people, because when I was in doing the jail ministry, I had a lot of men. They said, man, how do we know that this God is real and, and we don't see him? And our mama told us the two fairy. They told us about Santa Claus, told us about the bunny, all this stuff in his faith. So what makes Jesus real? And I thank God my mama never lied to us about what? Santa Claus. Amen. Amen. She told us the truth. When we was kids, she said, it was me that's going to get them told. Amen. Whether she put them at layaway at, at Hills, Kmart, she said, it was me. And then she took us to pick out what we want. So she put them in layaway. Ain't that a good mama? So we know we was expected to get. Amen. But we was kids, anxious enough, we was, couldn't wait to still rip them toys up like we'd never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And at that time, we used to try to stay up all night long. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Christmas and 4th of July was our favorite time as a child. Amen. Because yeah. that's when food and celebration and popping fireworks and Christmas is food and family and for Christmas. And I'll tell you, Thanksgiving was another one. Right, Mr. Moe? So, so Thanksgiving was another one, but we enjoyed it because it brought family together. It brought the kids wherever we haven't seen, especially when we got older, it brought us back together, some of us. Amen? Amen. So, so we see this, guys, as a point of reference when Jesus was talking about development. All of us, we have to do what? Develop. And that's what the mothers are doing. They're developing you. And if you grew up a certain way or you didn't get to develop, it's not too late. Amen. Amen. It's not too late. Some people say, man, I didn't get that type of teaching. But well, now, you can get it now. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You can get it now. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 2. Minister, what does it say? And he, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He says, blessed are the poor in what spirit? He says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Keep reading. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who cry. He said, they will be comforted. Keep going. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Because he says, guess what? You want to have the earth back anyway. When God started telling me, don't get caught up down here on this earth when he talked. He said, because all this is going to be yours anyway. Amen. So don't get caught up with these celebrities and some of these people got it. It's going to be yours. That's right. Nobody, he said, calm down. It's yours. <laughs> he said, the whole earth is mine. I'm going to give it back to you. Yeah, man. Don't get caught up because the wicked is seen to prosper. Yeah. It's going to be yours. Yeah. And I said, that's all I need to know. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to be yours. That's why I say blessed. I love when he said that. The meek shall inherit the earth. Not the wicked. The Bible said the wicked will be no more. Amen. Amen. I like that. I like being the radio station. I'm just playing. I know I like to have fun. Right? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen, bro. Thank you. Thank you. But anyway, let's keep it pushing. Keep going, sister. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For? For they shall be filled. Keep going. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Keep going. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And let me tell you something about the merciful. And, and, uh, and he said, because they should be filled. There was a time in my life, I was when I was probably 17 or 18, I was thinking about killing somebody. Well, amen. I was really thinking about getting. My friends was trying to encourage me to get them. Amen. And my mama told me something. Because this guy, he snuck up behind me and hit me in the back of the head with a big brick. And bust my head. And I had to have like 18 or 20 stitches. And I said, oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, when I recover. And my friends, they, yeah, we got to get him. Get him. And my mama told me something. She said, Nina, let this go. I said, no, mama, I can't let it go. You see what he did to me? She said, revenge is the Lord. Mm. The Lord ain't got nothing to do with this one. Right? Amen, bro. <laughs> I'm kidding you, telling you not. The dude, he knew I was out there. Because every time he seen me, whether I, I seen him in the project or seen him up on the hill, uh, he ran. And I'm talking about he ran for probably about six months until it really dawned on me. God says, do what your mama said and let it go. Give him mercy. God was still working on my heart when I was even a Christian. And guess what I did? I gave him what? Mercy. Because I told him when he was kept on running after six months, I said, I could have been that got you. Because they told me where you was at. Because my friend would call me page. That's where we used to have pages. And say, hey, I know where he's at. Sneak around. We can get him. And, and, and my mama and, and I told him, no, nah, I'm going to let it go. They said, what? You know what he found to you? I said, dude, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let him have, have, his, have his love, whatever he had. And I let it go. And I never forget. When he's, he said, man, why you ain't chasing? You still going to get me? I said, no, I'm done. I told him that. I said, why are you still running? It's seven months. If I could, if I wanted to get you, I could have got you on the second month when my head healed up, right? When they took them stitches out. But I let it go. And that's what my mom taught me. Amen. He taught me to be merciful. He taught me because if you be merciful, you attain what? Mercy. That's why I'll be telling people, Ma, no, you, you got to understand when God says, if you want to obtain mercy, give it. You want to obtain forgiveness, give it. It's all the same. I forgive. That's why it's easy for me to forgive. Amen? Amen. And that's why he says the next verse, 9, he says, blessed are the who? Peacemakers. I'm a peacemaker now. And I used to be the, the meanest kid at that time. Teenagers. And I'm telling you guys, he said, Blessed are the peace, peacemakers, for they shall call, be called what? Sons of God. Look at that. Blessed are those who persecute, persecute for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And that's why he's telling you us this because God is that ultimate teacher. Amen. So let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Move right along. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 29. Matthew 7 and 29. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 29. We talked about this a little bit last week about, you know, uh, the message was, you know, first thing first. Jesus, he talked with authority. That's the reason why sometimes you call your sons or your daughters, you gotta speak with a what? Authority. Caleb! 
You see, he just jumped out. Get out. See, get out. See, 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 yeah. see, see, you speak with authority. Yeah. Amen. So they know you really mean what? Business. Business. Now they try to act all oh, act. Amen. My kids are actors. Amen. So, so you teach with an authority to the point he says in verse uh, 729 he said he taught them as one having what? Authority not as scribes and we understood what the scribes are they was the religious people who was just zealous they were just they didn't have no authority what they was they didn't really believe what they were saying or do what they were saying that's the difference amen and, and Jesus now he says he taught them one having authority to do what he was called to do. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 14, please. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Keep going, please. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Look at that. He taught. There you go. He's still teaching. See, you, I, I found out you'll never stop teaching. Your life, my life will teach on. Your kids will have memory. You know what? The, I'm, I'm talking about my mom. and uh, But I have memories of what she taught me. I have memories. People say, how do you come in your faith like this? It's because my mom. I knew it. My mom had a calling on her life. And I told you I ran from the calling. I didn't want it. I told Minister Brenda, I was trying to be a celebrity myself. Mm. <laughs> I told Mr. Brooke, I went to uh, L.A. and could try to connect with these so-called stars. And really, they were trying to teach me debauchery oh, yeah. and yes. sinistness and all kind of mess. And I was, you know, because they were trying to make me look at the God of money. That's right. Because I said, if I get the God of money... How this world teaches us, go after the God of money. And we talked about that. The love of money is the what? The root. Money ain't the root of all these. The Bible says the money answers all the things. And it's a blessing from the Lord. But the love of it. And I realize most of these celebrities, they got caught up merchandising their talents and their gifts to go after the what? Money. And I never forget when I was in California, the Lord told me to get back to Nashville. Yeah. And the reason why He told me that is because He was telling me, I'd be like, you know, the little chihuahuas and dogs chase their tails and go in circles. He said, ain't nothing going on because I called you to do my will. Mm -hmm. Amen. So He said, you would be like getting tired, little dog, and say, like, and they do it again like they go get it and never get it. So he told me to get back to Nashville, and I never forget I, uh, when I was talking to Shaquille O'Neal. That dude's a big dude, and he said, "Lou, you need to stay here." <laughs> and I said, "And that's when Shaquille had like three girlfriends, mm. model chicks." And I was like, "My God, you know?" Because I was like, "Ooh wee," because he said, "Oh man, we get it some stuff up here." I said, "He says no one would have three. I said, "Really? Really?" My God. I think I'm a part of that life. And I hear the Spirit of God say, you don't want this life. He was trying to tell me, get back to Nashville. Because if I had stayed there, you already heard the story, birds of the feather. And, and they used to tell me when I was in the streets that I didn't have nothing. It takes one to know one. Amen. See, I come out of the streets, so I know game. Amen. Amen. So when they was telling me this stuff, and I was like, oh, that, that was all my desires, my dreams. But I found out that the Lord told me, just like my mama said, look, give up your dreams and find out what, what God wants you to do. Amen. It's not that I can't do some of the stuff. He said, you can do it, but you can do it in righteousness. Right? It's not that I couldn't do the music. It's not that I couldn't do comedy because I'm I'm a silly person in a way and I did that. I put on two little comedy shows and I put myself in my own comedy show. The first one was excellent, but the second I think I put too much thought into it. 
And I went to do it at a, a, a little jazz thing, and too many people didn't laugh. But my wife, she was laughing, and I think minister, <laughs> I had some ripples like, I don't know about that one, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I had to say, you know what? I tried it. Amen. But see, a lot of times what happens is, guys, when we don't hear what our moms told us, or we don't hear the instruction what the Lord done said, and the Lord told me to get back, and I came on back. Amen. Amen. And I was down there each, I, I was one week a whole seven days. Then I went back to just to make sure another seven days. Because my other friend who lived down there, I used to live here, he's connected with celebrities. I met uh, one of the Will Smiths and producers. And I'm telling you, man, but God was protecting me while I was around them. Because some of them was after me, not even knew it. Amen. And you know what that means out of me, amen. They wanted me. And I was like, oh no, I don't want this, amen. amen. So I had to come back, amen. And I said, Lord, there's no way. There's no way. Y'all don't know what people to do for money. Jesus. But I don't want it, amen. 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 When it's got strings attached to it, I don't want your money. Take it straight to hell with you, because that's where you're going at, amen. amen. And, I, and I told my guy friend, I said, I'm not coming back. And he said, man, you need to stay. Make up your mind. I said, I think God has made his, my mind up for me. Go back to Nashville. Amen. 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 And that's when everything else started to pop off. Amen. Amen. So, so watch this, people of God. Let's go to Luke chapter 24 and 27. Luke 24 and 27. And I, and I can still hear my mom telling me, do what God told you to do. Amen. And I think one of my mom's favorite, when I began to do what God told me to do, she was real proud. Because she said, I taught him, and even though it was rough, some rough spots, she directed me, she taught me, she said, there ain't no good going to come out of this. Amen. Amen. And my mama was right. Amen. And your mama was right too. Amen. That's why a lot of times, uh, a mama's love will love you no matter if you're in any trouble. I never forget. I watched uh, a documentary where this young man had was sentenced to life in prison, and the mother was there. A little old lady was there, and she said, "My baby, it's gonna be all right." And the, and the son was crying, saying, "Mom, I'm sorry, I disappointed you." You know, tears swelled up in my eyes seeing that, because I can understand the love of a mother. Amen. Amen. So so watch this, Luke 24 and 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded upon them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You know, he, he said, he talked about, Moses was talking about me. When he talked about I am, the I am, he said, that was me. That's just why you, you see the religious people, they wanted to kill him. And they said, hey, hold on, you ain't number 30 something years old. You talking about Moses was talking about you. He said, I am, the I am. He says, Moses, enjoy me. What are you talking about? He said, Moses seen me in my glory. He says, I even took Moses back all the way from Genesis, and that's where we wrote Genesis. A lot of people don't even realize this. People say, who wrote Genesis? Moses. He took him back in time. That's why I said, man, God, God can take you back, like Back to Future. Remember that movie, Back to Future? What was it actor named Michael J. Fox playing in that? He'll take you back. And you think you're right there. He'll put a replay on you in a minute. He'll, be like, He'll take you back when he got on that cross. So you can really see how he suffered for you or not. He'll take you back. He'll give you visions and dreams. You think you're sleeping. You think you're having a movie, a uh, uh, dream. And this is uh, really, he done took you back. Because God, God is a person that said, it's really nothing too hard for me to do. Amen. This is why when God made a covenant with Abraham, you know what the crazy thing about that? He put Abraham to sleep. God only put two people to sleep. That was Adam and Abraham. And then he was telling Abraham why he was asleep, but he didn't care about telling Abraham. He was telling himself, keeping him his own words what he was going to do. <laughs> Look at this, how powerful it is. Because we were like, why would he put him to sleep and then make a covenant with Abraham? Because God says, no, I'm holding my own self to my words. Amen. 
That's why I tell people, people don't have a clue. God says, my word, that's what the Bible says, he's a God that cannot what? Lie. He's not like everybody else. He's not. That's why he says, no, you don't understand. He said, I show mercy to who I want to show mercy. Ain't that how your mama do? We told him back, if you had other siblings, come on, Julia. <laughs> mama! Julia just, that's all right. He, he just messed up. Come on, baby. <laughs> and we be like, that ain't right. Mama, mama pick a favor. No, you don't understand. It's like the prodigal son. You, you, we don't understand the love of the Father. Amen. 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 I love. Man, God, God is a, and I, that's why I say I can't wait to see Him again. Amen. His love is just staring at you with crushing. You know, you'll fall. You can't stand in that pressure. Looking in his eyes like that. Mm. You know, uh, my kids love that movie, Puss in Boots. And when Puss put that, the, the, the cat eye on him, I go, oh, Lord, it's going to get you. <laughs> the eyes will get you. And I'm like, I said, I said, why is Puss in Boots doing that? The eyes will get you. Because anytime you look in his eyes, you're done. Mm. Amen. Amen. And that's why anytime you look at your mama's eyes, and your mom said, look at me, boy. Look at me, daughter. Mama, no. Look. I know I was wrong. It's because you're done. That's why, that's why, that's why when parents tell you to look at their eyes, and some kids don't want to look because they're hiding something. Amen. Amen. What you do? I didn't do nothing. Well, look at my eyes and tell me. Okay. Because the eyes tell the secrets of the soul. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's why we don't like to look in people's eyes. Because we try to hide. And mothers know you can't hide nothing from a mama. No, you can't. Amen. Amen. They say, I know you're up to something. <laughs> it ain't no good. Amen. I know you're up to something. I'll never forget one time day I came home so funny. She said, what you do? And I, I said, dang, girl, you didn't even. No, they had to do something. Said, Come on out here, somebody better get a pop. I said, dang, she's going to get them a pop before they even did nothing. I was like, she said, because you feel to do something, you're going to do something. You're going to get them before. I was like, oh, my goodness. Amen, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, man, that's crazy funny. Amen. Yeah. So, so, so watch this in John chapter 7 now. John 7 and 14. Still talking about mothers teach and their teachers to instruct and guide for knowledge to learn. Amen. <clears throat> John chapter 7 and 14, please. Now about the midst of the feast of Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Uh -huh. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, What he said? My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He says, Watch it. He says, The Father taught me. So he's trying to say, This is not my doctrine. Because they said, Who taught you this? And he says, I'm getting instructions from who? The Father. And that's the awesome thing, because they're trying to say, Well, what school did he go to? Well, he. What doctrine or degree did he get this information from? And he says, I got it when I was in heaven. Because, you know, the Bible's in the book of John chapter 1. He says, in the beginning was what? The Word. And the Word was what? With God. Who was with God? The Word. Who was the Word? Jesus. He said, the Word was with God. And the Word was what? God. He said, this happened in the beginning. Amen? Amen? That's why we have to understand and tell people that God says, I was in the beginning. The Father taught me. That's because of my love. He says, I'm only going to do what the Father told me to do. So that's why Satan could manipulate him and deceive him. That's just why Jesus said, Satan has nothing in me. And, say, and, and, and Jesus said, he says, so Satan don't have nothing. That means he can't instruct me to, to do anything. Because I already know who I am. 
when a, when a man or a woman of God or a child know who they are, they friends, little friends can instruct them. Because they already know their own identity. That's why it's, it's for the mothers to teach. So your son or your daughter won't get caught up. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says, and if they do get caught up, they know how to get back. Amen. Hello, somebody. Because the Bible tells us, watch this, guys. The Bible talks about, he says, when they've been instructed the things of God, he said, when they, if they do fall, they know how to come right back. Because they have something in them. The only reason why some of the children don't come back is because the parents never instructed. Yes. That's why we say, man, how can such and such do what they are doing? Because they didn't have grounded principles. Right. And how did I come back? Because it was grounded right. principles in me as a young kid. Right. That's the only reason you can. But some kids, remember I talked about my mom in the beginning. How I thought, because I grew up poor, my mama was poor. But my mama was very spiritually rich than any other parent in the neighborhood. My neighbor had a mom and dad in their house. And he came and bought a car for me about what, three months ago. And he told his wife, he says, man, Lou, uh, mom raised all of them by herself. Nine children. Amen. We had a daddy and a mama. I did seven years of prison time. My brother then got this baby after this baby. Booby got 17 kids. I'm like, my God. And they got 13 kids. I was just at uh, Krispy Kreme this morning. The lady, the old lady said, hey, man, how old, what's your name? I said, my name is Lou. She said, how old are you? you. She said, she said you, you, you about for 24, 30? I said, no, 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 no. I'm not 24, 30. I'm 54. She said, she had to go tell the other. She said, oh, oh, I can't believe this. She said, how are you looking like that? I said, because it's God. I found out the secret of looking young is not to get caught up in sin. Why they trying to sell you all these creams and injections and stuff? Sin will make you look bad. Oh my God, sin? I was about to say something else. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Sin will make you look real bad. Amen. Especially if you stay out there long enough in it. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling you, some of the, my friends I went, boy, they look at me, they're like, I went to a class year reunion with about, they it was about five years ago, and everybody, I looked younger than everybody, and they were looking at me like, you went to the same school? That you, what was your name again? And I totally just laughed because they were saying, well, how are you still looking like this? I'm telling people, it's God who bought me out of that lifestyle at the age of 20. Wow. Amen? Amen. And I had a made up mind. That's why I said I've been doing this, what, 30 some years now? 34 years? It, it's God who did it. I, I was just obedient to it. Amen? That's why my daughter said, Daddy, you ain't young no more. You can't not say I can do everything. Amen. I can. I can run and do all some of the young boys do. Amen. Yes. Don't let this. I told that lady, I said, no, this is a young looking 54. So when y'all said 54 looking 24, I said, oh, she was right. She said, you look about 24. I said, I don't know what. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> That's because God, you know, it's a scripture the Bible says. He says he will restore your what? Youth. If you just woke up right. But Abraham was how old and looking young. Look at vibrant. Oh God, at 140. Because I already told the Lord, Lord, if you keep me here a long time, I don't want to be walking around King Hollow Wall. Who wants that life? Not I take me home. I don't told I told the Lord if my kids think they're gonna put a dependable on me, like I'm going back to a baby, that's the wrong thing. If I start wearing a dependable, you know I'm clocking out. I'm waiting it. Take me home. It's over. 
He finna put no dependable on me. Get me in a diaper. Amen. A grown person diaper. Amen. That's why I said, now nah, I'm going to take care. <laughs> I'm going to take care of what God stopped. And that large man told me that. Daddy, you can stay with me in the room. Because oh, yeah. you just leave me in that room. <laughs> oh, trust these children. Amen. Amen. Hey, teacher B, get me back. Amen. Amen. But anyway, what I said, I wouldn't do that to you, Daddy. I know you wouldn't. All right, let's get into it. Psalms chapter 7, verse 17. We can stay, stay in the content of Scripture. Psalm 7 and 17, please. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Keep going, please. That's it. That's it. Seven and seven? seven you seven, said seventeen. No, I said seven. Psalm seven. Is it, there's no eighteen on there. Man, why I got eighteen on here? That must be something that's in the spirit. Well, read what the Lord tells you. <laughs> 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 read what the Lord tells you. Come up with some stuff, I'm just saying. Don't do that. Isaiah 54, verse 13. Watch this, guys. Isaiah 54, verse 13. And thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Look at that. You know, you want to, as, as, as you, you, your, your children, you don't want to bring shame to your parents' name. Amen. You want to give your parents peace. I told my kids, don't be bringing no roof up here. Amen. And the reason why, because you don't want to have your parents all in their old age worried about you. Amen. And that's why I told, you know, my mom is still a, I can never be your friend. I got to be your mama. Amen. Don't be your children or your grandchildren's friend. Amen. Be the parent. Amen. That's all I've got to say on that because he says, you, your parents, I mean your children will bring you peace, not stress you out. Amen. Amen. I want peace in my old age. Amen. 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 I don't like a lot of drama. Amen. Amen. You take my peace. Amen. I got to get away from you. You got some, some peace killers in some of these kids. They just come and drain the peace out of you. Amen. 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 And that's why I said, take that over there. If you ain't trying to do right, be right by one another, you know what God done told you to do. Take that down there. Because me and my house will have some what? Peace. Amen. That's why I tell my kids, they get the, them two, the youngest, they always at it. I said, oh, I need peace. I just got here and came home. Got the door. Why would you come to me? Now that this one did it. I said, give me peace. Or the belt for to give y'all some peace. <laughs> oh, I don't play. The 32 will come off. Mm. Amen. 32 back waistline. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, Amen. I'm telling you. Stop it. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The 32 will come off. Amen. Amen. And they know it. They start running. That's all I got to go get. I got to just act like I'm going to that room. And get that belt. There you keep a belt under the couch. She's sweet with it. She she keep it hid under the pillow. I said, my God, I gotta get swift. I gotta just go, I gotta go get it. <laughs> they, 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 they run it like a trampede, like da, 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 cow. I said, look at they scared now. Nah. Daddy, I said, don't call me now. You disturbed our peace. <laughs> Amen. I said, you disturbed our peace. Amen. All right, let's go to John chapter 6, 40, 40, 40, uh, John 6 and 40 to 45. I'm sorry. Let's get back to John. And this is the will of him that sent me, yeah. that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Keep going, please. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, It is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Look at they try to bring him back to, oh, his, we know his mom, we know his daddy. Keep going. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. 
No man can come to me except the Father which has Stop! Look at how God said, no man can come to the Father unless the Father draws him. That made me research all the uh, so-called religious things that we do in church, like bring chairs down here. It really did. Because I've been to a lot of churches, this is what they do. And this means where you join a church and get baptized and you say, But I found out the Spirit of God ain't drawing a lot of people. It's the choir drawing them. Or it's the preacher drawing them. And God never dealt, they never allowed God to deal with their heart. But they come to church thinking they're right. But they're not right because it's God can only one get us right. Amen? Amen. And that's the reason why the Bible says, when I knock on the, your heart. In Hebrews, he says, when I knock on your heart, heart not your what? Heart. Because it's a day of visitation where the Spirit of God has to convict you of your sin. Not the choir. Not the preacher. But the Spirit. So when the spirit comes in, then he automatically starts severing most of that stuff off of your life immediately. Amen. Other things must be worked out through the word. See, they don't teach you this. <laughs> they just say, come up here, and it ain't going to be lolly dolly. We like the party, and it ain't going to be no lolly dolly. Because they ain't telling you about the fighting against your flesh. And denying yourself. Amen. Amen? And I've seen so many people who honestly really want to do right. But they can't do right because the preacher told them because they got baptized that they were saved. Right? Yeah, right. And, and I'm like, that don't mean nothing if you don't understand what you did. Right? right. And I'm like, no, when I came to the Lord, I knew something was going on because my heart was beating like 100 miles an hour like the police was trying to get in the house. Amen. Amen. And I was scared. Didn't want them to come in. At first, I said, what is going on in my heart beating this fast? I said, uh-oh. It's the spirit. He said, let me in. I said, no, I don't want to. I was trying to hold on to the old life. But the spirit of God said, let me in. And I, when I stood up, guess what happened? Weights fell off of me. Yeah. Tears came out of my eyes. Now, it was, it was easy for me to come to the front. But I didn't sit in no chair. You know what else I did? I repent. Because <laughs> the Bible says when the Spirit of God come on you, you immediately know you done did wrong. The Holy Ghost have to arrest you. Amen. Amen. And forgive you of your trespasses. Amen. Amen and man, once I got, I got saved, my God, it was a, it was a game changer. Now it was, it was easy. Remember I told you signing a contract and all that stuff, this entertainment stuff? I rejected it immediately. Because the Spirit of God came there. And then some of my unsaved friends said, Lou, how do you really know you just ain't got religion? I said, this ain't no religion. I used to cuss, drink a little bit, carry out pistols sometimes. And you think, I'm religious? How dare you? I used to fight you guys sometimes. I used to run women sometimes. I said, you talking about the religion? No, this is God. My life should tell you something that has happened to me. Y'all know how I talked about money and getting this contract. Y'all know, and I was telling them this. And I said, and then one after another, when they start coming to church, the Spirit of God was convicting them. Some of them, one of them stayed, the rest of them got scared. Because we went to KFC Chicken and we talked about it. Because I used to say, I said, okay, don't believe me, just come to church. They came to church and guess what? The Spirit of God was all on, but they didn't want to get up. They were fighting it. Like I used to fight. I, oh, mm. When the Spirit touched me, it's time to get up. Amen. That's what the Bible says, when the Spirit is, is, is moving on you, it's like a mother, get up. They're trying to get you right. Sin is filth. That's why right, the Bible says filth can't stand before God. 
That's why he says we got to be truthful and honest with oneself. God already know where we all are at. But a lot of us, we like to lie to ourselves. Because we, we listen to our own lies. That's why God says you can't do because you, and God says, I make a covenant with you, so I'm going to stand by the words I say, not what you say. Amen. 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 And I thank Amen. God for that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. So, so I'm telling you, people of God, we have to understand this stuff. Amen. Amen. To the point where he says, watch this, he said, it is written. Now, you didn't finish 43. Uh, Jesus therefore answered and said unto him, said unto them, Murmur not amongst yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. 45. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. They'll be taught by who? God. Taught by who? God. Taught by who? God. Okay, everybody say, taught by who? God. Taught by who? God. Taught by the pastor? No, taught by God. They all should be taught by God as he has seen the Father. As just like they see. God will stop putting it in your heart what to do. Right. It's, it's easy for me to do right now. Amen. Man, my wife tells on each other now. My wife is my biggest confidant. I tell on myself before I get in a mess. <laughs> the devil trying to get me, babe. She said, really? And then he, he tried to get there one time. We said Crow was a little old man in one of the little chairs riding around. And out me and Daya separate trying to get some groceries, right? You remember that day? And that old man said, hey, young girl. He thought she was, he said, you married? I'm just listening <laughs> down there. Like I already know her. I'm like, I'm just, he said, you married? And she said, yeah, I'm married. And oh, yeah, I don't see your weed ring on your finger. I can buy some groceries, baby. Wow. And then it's just, no, I'm good. And then she said, that's my husband right there. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, bro. It was so funny. I don't make that go. It was so funny. He was trying to give his EBT away. Amen. Not today. Amen. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! It was so funny. And then me and Danielle, I said, I said, I said, they gonna your boyfriend, Danielle. We were laughing. <laughs> and then it was one time we was on the radio, right? And this lady used to write into the radio show. Oh, lady, remember that Iris and Britt? And uh, uh, man, we was going to the house to pray for her, but she didn't want prophet and other ministers to come in the house. She just wanted me. And then she used to write. Uh, Pastor Phillips, if you ever get lonely, uh -huh. <laughs> you and your wife ever get in an argument, you can, you can come and lay in my couch. It was so funny. I tell you, I read that. She said, you said, she said your girlfriend to come. We, said, we, we mess with each other because we understand. We don't get caught up in no jealousy. We don't put trackers on each other. We trust what God has did, taught her and taught me. Amen. Amen. Because God sees everything in the way. Amen. Amen. It was funny, man. Thank God for my wife, Danielle. Amen. 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 Everybody can't be like that. Amen. I didn't realize that. Amen. 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 <laughs> I can run to Brenda and say she got the trigger, she got the tri trigger finger. Okay. <laughs> He said, I shoot you by trying to get Roselle. I don't train him. She said, I shoot you. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. Amen. He said, I done trained him too long. He's been with me too long. Can't let him get away easy. So I got a snub nose 32. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Let me get back to the teacher. Just stop. God, leave me alone. Let me finish what God called me to do. Amen. So we go get some meat. Amen. <sighs> Galatians chapter 1, verse 12, please. Woo. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. See this? Paul talking to the church of Galatia, he says, I didn't receive what? He didn't see me taught by man, but he was trained by who? The God himself. Jesus Christ. Keep going. For ye have heard my com of my confidence. Of my that conversation of conduct. Yeah, keep going. in time past in the Jewish religion, uh -huh. how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. 
Look at that. He says, I persecuted the church of God and did what? He was wasted. He said, I was very zealous in this. He said, I, I, I took up my pure advantage of what God, he thought God was telling him to do. Keep reading, please. And it, and it profited in the Jewish religion of uh, many, my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. See, he said, I was very zealous in traditions. That's the reason why when you find some of the churches, you don't want to be zealous. You don't want to be so religious. Right? To the point you know I'm not being religious like these people was doing. They were so zealous to keep the laws. Like some churches trying to teach people, just keep the law, keep the Ten Commandments. I'm like, no. We, our faith is in the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Amen. It ain't in uh, pork because I ate bacon. Uh, when did I eat bacon? Uh, Friday. It ain't because I ate a catfish on Wednesday or Thursday, right? It ain't none of that because some people want to keep you in it where you can't eat this and can't do this. And that's all tradition. Because the Bible says in the book of Titus, says, don't judge no man what food or yes. drink he eat. That's right. Amen. Don't hold no man account. Because then we, we find ourselves being zealous in traditions. The old way of doing things. Amen. Amen. So 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 watch this. What did you finish up, Miss Cyrus? I read 14. 15, please. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's Here you go. He, it pleased God. God says it pleased him because God had a calling on Saul before he was Paul. Amen. He said he separated me from my mother's Womb. And called me by his grace. And he called me by his grace. I tell people that it's by the grace of God that I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Because if I was doing what I was doing, man, I was thinking about that too. What if I didn't choose his way? Man, I can't imagine how my life would be. It wouldn't be like this. Probably dead. Yeah, probably dead in prison. I could, I, I'm telling you. And that's why now it ain't a shocker when I see some of my old friends, old people that I did grow with is already gone. Amen? Amen. So, so watch this. Let's go, let's keep on going. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 and 3. Acts chapter 13, the book of Action. Action, Jackson, Acts 13, 1 and 3. Now they were in the church that was at Antioch, uh -huh. certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger of Niger, Lucius, uh, Lucius of Cyrus, uh -huh. and Maine, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. Yeah, can Saul. keep going. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost, said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Keep going. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Keep going. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Cecilia. That's in the town. You know, it was in the city. Keep going. From hence they sailed to Cyprus. Now watch this. He says, now, this is how Paul and them said how they sent. Because me and another minister friend, we had a good conversation about a lot of times you see people uh, maybe being taught through theologian school, really God never called them. And that, remember I told you this how a lot of mess up in churches go? Because a lot of people get a, a certificate or a degree, they know Bible, but they're not a part of the Bible. Does that make sense? You can learn the Bible, but you don't have his spirit. But the Bible says they fasted for those times to see who God was going to what? Call and separate. That's just why when Paul was saying it early in Galatia, he says, the Lord separated me from my mother's womb. And this context of scripture, he's having Paul now and the other men of God praying fast to separate who should we send out. To another point, now you know why me and my pastor have this conversation. A lot of people ain't been sent because God never called them. Either they called themselves or Satan called them to mess it up the, the church as a whole. 
And that's why the Bible said the blind will lead the blind and they all will fall into what? Ditch. And he says, leave them what? Alone. That's why I don't mess with zealous religious people. Amen? It's not that uh, they, don't, they won't listen. It's they can't listen because they don't have the spirit of God in them. Amen? I met so many preachers, men of God, deacons, when I was in Alabama. <laughs> and I, I hate to even talk about this stuff, man. And, and, and uh, you know, he, he was so zealous for us to stay in his house. And I, saw, I told the rest of the crew, I said, man, I'm not standing in this dude's house. We, they, the, the church I already bought us a hotel. It don't make sense. And he talked about, oh, man, you know, stay in my house. Pastor, no, I drank. And y'all want to drink? Now, hold up. Wait a minute. I, no, 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 no. This ain't this type of party. We're going back to the hotel. Right. Amen. Because if you if you a deacon and you drank and got whole refrigerator full of beer. Right. This time to go. Yeah. I said, and I, we had a couple of women with us too. I said, man, y'all don't eat. And when he went to the room, he said, I can put some food on the grill and we just chill out and blah, blah, blah. I said, y'all don't know. He may got cameras all in his, his house. I said, I'm going back to the hotel. Amen. And, and I said, I, I, uh, he's, and he's talking about, my pastor know I drink. Pastor such don't know I, I get down like this. So why would he put us with you? I said, man, can somebody please take us back to the hotel? Immediately. I'm the one stirred. I said, we got to get back to the hotel. He said, y'all sure? I said, yes, sir, we sure. We got a hotel. We're going to stay in the hotel. Right? And that's what we did. Because you don't know, you gotta have the spirit of discernment on people. Some people ain't never called. They call themselves. Or they went to a class themselves. Amen? Amen. So so watch this last scripture, um, Romans chapter 2, verse 19, Brother Stars. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of faith. Look at that. Keep going. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Keep going. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? He says, you you teachers. Because that's what teaching is supposed to do. You're supposed to know how to teach yourself. If you teach other people, are you not teaching yourself? Are you preaching to others? Are you not preaching to yourself? Sure we are. He said, art thou not a teacher? He says, he says, first of all, he says, and are confident that you yourself are the guide to the blind. He says, some people are guides to the blind. Then he started talking about, he says, to those who are in darkness, an instructor of foolish, a teacher of babes, having a form of knowledge and truth in the law. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you still steal? Mm. Look at that. He said, how are you going to teach somebody if you're not taking your own practice of teaching? That's why I tell preachers, how are you going to preach to people and you're not adhering to your own message, mm. what you preach? Amen. 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 Because I'm telling you, uh, the, the, the real remedy of the church won't get themselves caught up in foolishness. Because we know, like I was telling pastor, another pastor friend of mine, we know there's a lot of foolishness out there. But we must teach the people what God taught us how to come out of certain things. Just like your mama said, hey, when I was young, I did a lot of foolish stuff. My mama told us, she said, when I was young, I used to go to dancing at clubs and drinking and got drunk and all that. She told us, that's teaching. She told us a mistake. She told us where she fallen at and how she come to the Lord. And I've been serving God since I was yay high. And then my mama told me when we was yay high, me and my younger sister, she said the devil uh, told her to drown both of us in the bathtub. Because she said she was having a nervous breakdown because of all these kids. You remember that? And then I started thinking about me and my sister was the first two preachers that came out of the house. See how Satan knows what God got on people's lives? She said, I was about to have a nervous breakdown, and the Lord said, don't do it. Because she said, I was going to drown you and your sister in the tub. 
See how God, God says, you know what? Satan gets in people's minds yes. and try to oppress them. Mm -hmm. Same thing last year. We seen the the uh, uh, the Florida guy in California drove off a cliff, a mountain in a Tesla, and tried to kill his whole family. And then, and I'm talking about 30 feet, and they didn't die. Amen. Amen. That was God. I'm talking about that was that Tesla. No, no, that was God, because that cliff was. And I said, oh my God. And they, I see how that car hit that flat and hit that. They just said, oh, Tesla, really? No, 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 no. That's God. Because everybody survived. And he had like three kids and a wife. But now they finna charge him. That's why I tell people, you never know what the devil puts in people. Yes. Amen? Amen but we ain't following the voice of the devil. We follow the voice of our God. Amen? That's just why he says a stranger you won't listen to no more. Because I know what's right and wrong now. Amen? Because he had taught me. Same way my mama taught me. Amen? Same way your mother taught you. It ain't, it's not feasible for you to be doing what you're doing. That's not God. And it's not God. Amen. Let's give God a big hand praise, people of God. <clears throat>